Hello friends, my name is Shayla and today I am here to wrap up the reading month of January for you. January has really been like a banner reading month. I read a total of 19 things this month, maybe 20, I don't remember, 19 or 20. <laughs> that number is leaving me here at the second, but I have nine items for you in this second half of the month reading wrap up. If you want to see what I read in the first half of the month, I will leave that link down below for you so you can go ahead and check that out. But for right now, I've got two rereads, so that's where we'll start. And then I've got three books that I'm going to be doing individual reviews on. So again, I won't do a lot of detail on those ones because they'll be getting their own reviews on my channel. And then I've got four other things that we'll be discussing. So let's start with the two rereads. The first reread that I finished this month was Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, which I left at a five-star rating. After reading all of Brandon, this was my first work of Brandon Sanderson's I ever read. So now that I've read all of his works, I really wanted to get back into this book and see if my thoughts or feelings have changed because at that point it was my favorite work of Brandon Sanderson. Well, I'm here to tell you it is still my favorite work of Brandon Sanderson. So in this novel, we follow four point of view perspectives. We have Siri and Vivenna. Siri is the youngest daughter in the neighboring kingdom in Tetelier who is sent to Tetelier to marry the God King in a political arranged marriage agreement that her father had signed up for 20 plus years before. Vivenna is her oldest sister who had been groomed her entire life to marry the God King at the last minute the father decided to play favorites and send Siri instead of Vivenna, which sends her on this epic journey of learning who she is without the obligation of being married to the God King. The third perspective we follow is Light Song, who's a god in Tetelier, because gods in Tetelier are what they also call returned. So they are people who have passed away, but then are immediately brought back to life by the force and magic in this world which is very interesting in and of itself. It has to do with color and manipulating objects with breath. It is super duper interesting. And then the fourth perspective we follow in this novel is, well, let me get back to Light Song. Light Song <laughs> is a god in this world who's very sarcastic, very witty, very snarky, and he just doesn't feel like a god, and so he wants to kind of go and investigate interesting things that are going on in the kingdom once series Siri arrives. And then our fourth perspective is a man named Vasher who is very mysterious, kind of this man gone rogue kind of thing with a black sword that talks. Those of you who are familiar with the Cosmere will know what that is, what the sword means and represents. So this definitely has ties into Mistborn and the Stormlight Archives. So if you have read those but have not read Warbreaker, I highly suggest you come and check out this novel because the character Vasher actually shows up in the Cosmere world in Roshar as well, for those of you who are familiar with the Stormlight Archive world. So I could go on and on for hours about this book. I do plan on re-reviewing this book because this was the first review I put up on my channel, I believe, and it's kind of a hot mess. So I do plan on re-reviewing this one sometime soon, but yes, five stars. Go check it out if you haven't. Next up is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langall. This is one that I maybe read once as a kid, and I didn't really remember anything about it. <laughs> so totally and completely as honest, this is not one I binge read and read all the time as a kid. That was The Secret Garden for me. But A Wrinkle in Time, I've come back to this and revisited it. I forgot how strange and odd it is as a, as a book, but I've really been enjoy I enjoyed my reread of this one. I'm going to leave it at a four stars. I don't Yes, it's acclaimed, but I don't think it's the best book ever written. It's still really good. I think it's great for kids and for the age group that it's shooting for. But yeah, four out of five stars for me. All right, the next three are books that are going to be getting individual reviews on my channel here soon. So that's why the wrap-ups here are going to be quite brief. So this is More to Love by Alison Bliss that I ended up giving like a 3.5, 3.75 stars. This is a romance book. Forever Romance was kind enough to send it to me for review, and I really enjoyed this. It's a very stereotypical romance novel. So in this, we follow Jessa and Max. Max is a fat kid gone fit 
and Jessa is a food truck owner who's just rolled into his town, rolled in across the street from the restaurant that he frequents every day, and he's made good friends with the owner, and the owner's getting kind of run out of business because of her food truck across the street. So, you know, this is an enemies to lovers kind of situation. It's really fun, steamy, smutty romance book. If you're into that kind of thing, I suggest picking this up because this is also a curvy girl romance novel. So this isn't some perfect little waif of a model that is finding love in this novel. So I like it for that, which is why it's got between 3.5 and 3.75 because I thought that aspect of it was dealt with very nicely. <laughs> so check this out. If you haven't, again, this will be getting a full review on my channel here soon. Next up is Worst Case by Beck Anderson. This book I ended up giving 4.5 stars. This book was amazing. This has really great mental health rep in it. Um, our main character has anxiety and her mom has anxiety and PTSD. So to watch how they kind of feed off each other throughout the novel was really interesting. Um, so in this novel, it starts out that Vivi and her mom have recently moved to this, this, this small town in Idaho and they, you know, were just kind of running away from their previous life and where they were living. It's all really mysterious in the beginning. It all makes sense by the end, obviously. So Vivi's got like six weeks left in her senior year. She goes to school. She shows up at the bus stop and, you know, neighborhood boy just comes up, says hi, it was really nice to her. They build a friendship. It becomes more later. And it's really interesting to see how all of our characters grow throughout this novel. I highly recommend picking this up if you haven't. And this will be getting a full review on my channel again here soon. So please stay tuned for that. Next up is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This book, again, I gave 4.5 stars. This is a romance novel, again, sent to me by Forever Romance Books. So thank you, Forever Romance for sending me these two novels for review. This one's coming out in February, so again, there will be a full review on this one coming up. So in this book, we follow a young woman named Brie who's kind of been running away from her life. Um, seven months before this novel takes place, her father is murdered in his deli, and she's there to witness it. And she's not dealing very well with life, so she kind of just gets in the car and starts driving, runs away, ends up in this small rural town in... Maine, I want to say. It's in Maine. I double checked on the back of the book. On her first day there, she goes to the grocery store, bumps into a, a man named Archer who kind of looks homeless. He's His clothes are clean enough, but they don't really fit him. He's got long hair in his face. He's got a scratchy beard, you know, one of those long, scraggly, Duck Dynasty looking things that's not well groomed. She says thank you because he's picking up things um, that she had spilled from her bag, you know bags break and things fall and he doesn't say anything to her and she's not sure what to think about that. It comes out, it comes out that Archer can't talk. He's been unable to talk since he was a child and was in a car accident where his parents and his uncle died. So that's all I'm going to tell you about this novel till I get into my actual review of it. But know that this book broke me on every level humanly possible and then put me back together in ways I didn't even expect it to. This book was a brilliant surprise. As you guys know, Mia Sheridan's book, Most of All You, was one of my favorite reads of last year, and this one was just as good, if not better. I would, I think I would almost say it's better than Most of All You, and I really enjoyed it, so please go check this out. Again, coming out like February 6th, I wanna say. My review will go up on the day it goes out. Okay, so I've got four more, well, five more books on this list, because I forgot one's digital. <laughs> So I've got five more books on this list. This wrap-up is getting so long already, and I'm very sorry about that, but I promise it's a good wrap-up. So the next two I will just sum up briefly, and that is volumes two, as I drop things, and three of Kitchen Princess. Kitchen Princess is a manga series that I started reading at the beginning of the month. You can go ahead and look at the review at the beginning of the month for more details on what this series is about. Um, our characters develop a lot in these two volumes. There's some sad things that happen in this third volume that broke me, but I'm okay. How this one ended, I'm very anxious to pick up the fourth omnibus here soon. And if you're interested in just a cute, fun, contemporary manga, definitely pick up Kitchen Princess. Alrighty, next up, I've got The Magic Kingdom of Land over here. I've read volume two in the omnibuses, which is The Tangle Box and Witch's Brew. 
which were originally the end of the Magic Kingdom of Landover series. There is another book now called A Princess of Landover, which I'm debating whether I'm going to pick up or not. I might because <laughs> I liked it that much. So both of these ended up averaging out to four stars. I really enjoyed the conclusion of this, ser this series. Please do not judge Terry Book's writing on the Shannara Chronicles. I enjoyed the Magic Kingdom of Landover series much better, but it also didn't take itself too seriously. It's meant to be more of a witty, satirical fantasy. So if you're interested in anything like that at all, I suggest picking up the Magic Kingdom of Landover series. All right, my last physical book I've got for you here is Frozen Tides, which is the fourth book in the Falling Kingdom series. And oh my goodness, where this book left off, it's crazy. I can't really give you a description at all because ultimate spoilers, because this is the fourth book in a series. But the Falling Kingdom series is roughly compared to a YA version of Game of Thrones. We have the land of Myth Mythica, Mythica? I forget how you say it. My brain's a little bit broken today. Sorry, guys. And you've got three lands warring for their territory within this land. And all of the political plays that are made, attacks made on various kingdoms... And it all ensues from there. Political marriages, marriages to save their lives. Um, it's all very, there's lots of angst in this series. Like if you like angst in your novels, you'll definitely like this series for sure. And if you stopped at like book two on Falling Kingdom series, I highly suggest picking up three and four because I like them significantly better than the first two. So Give the series a chance if you were questionable about it in the beginning. Last but not least is Marker of Hope by Nellie Cab. This is the third book in the Creatura series, and that's the conclusion of the trilogy. I know there's a fourth book now, but it's more of a origin story kind of situation. So this concludes our Creatura trilogy, and I really enjoyed this series. I ended up giving it four stars. I fly through these books. They're way fun. They are paranormal romance to the nth degree. It involves gods and creatures and creatura and it is just really really fun. I had a great time reading this series. If you have not checked these out I highly suggest you do because they're just really fun. Again don't go into them thinking they're going to be the best things you've ever read because they're not but they were highly enjoyable for me. Okay guys so that includes the January wrap-up for you. Again I will leave the first half of the month linked down below and if there's any information that was missing in this one, you'll probably find it in that one. Let me know your guys' favorite read from this month, and I will see you guys in the comments. Like and subscribe if you haven't. I will see you in the next one.